Hello everyone and welcome to another riveting episode of Wanna Go Fishing. Today we have decided that we, there's, there's we over there, together we're we. We. We have decided that we are going to go around looking at some antique stores today. Just get together, have some fun, go riding around, no fishing involved, no motorcycles, no reviews, no, just we. This is we. We just ate a Taco Bell. We may be regretting that. <laughs> but either way, we did it. Really soon. <laughs> Maybe sooner than we think. Anyway, we are actually at the Barrett Street Antique Store, Mall, whatever you want to call it. And it's in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Yes, we drove to Virginia Beach on a weekend before the 4th of July. We took the back way, which added another 45 minutes to our ride, but we got to see a lot of things that we had no desire to see whatsoever, <laughs> and we got to see them, though. So it got to add to the excitement of the adventure. Anyway, we're going to go inside and walk around take a look at some antique stuff. You never know what we might find, and I'll see if they let me film inside. I can only assume they might. Hopefully they won't have a problem with them. Some people do, some people don't. But it's publicity. It's advertising there's something in there I want and I get it I say to you I got it here why would they argue with that I don't know some people just do anyway let's go inside okay Nah, nobody uses those anymore <clears throat> now that's nice wonder if we can afford that no Spin flow. Might have to look at some of that. And your typical Mitchell. Looks like a 300. Well, let's see if we can take a look at that.
things were bought. Oh my gosh, it is, it's hot. Anyway, so things were bought and I'll show you those when we get home. Right now we've got about an hour and a half drive the back way, providing the, uh, the GPS and the mapping and stuff tells us the safest most I don't know, way to piss you off I'm not sure I, it's but anyway we're gonna get there one way or the other so anyway we'll see you back at the house or I will anyway she will she might what's going on everybody we are back home and it actually is the next day because while we were going out to the antique store my oldest son called me and informed me that we had some form of small waterfall coming out of the roof of our house. Now, we're a two-story house, so it wasn't actually the roof. It was the middle section, which is the first floor, ceiling, second floor, floor. Old houses. That's kind of what happens sometimes. Anyway, it has to do with corrosion and flowing and draining and so I spent most of the afternoon uh, cutting a hole in the floor or the ceiling kind of hard to explain that really anyway it's not fixed yet but we're working on that anyhow it's the next morning wanted to show you what we picked up at the antique stores now the second antique store that we went to I didn't find anything not that there wasn't anything there to be had but the things that they did have were a little bit too large for what I use, and so we just kind of left them alone. You never know if they're still there. I may go back and get one of them, uh, but it's more saltwater oriented, and I, at this point, do have a few saltwater reels that really never get used, which, hey, there's a future episode right there. The only problem with saltwater fishing for me around here is there's a lot of sitting involved. Anyway, we're going to talk about saltwater real quick, though, because the, one of the reels that I got kind of falls in between. It's a little large, not very small, a little bit in that, but we're going to show you right here. The Zebco XB65. Now, this is a pretty good chunk of reel here, but it was in really good shape, and it is a ball bearing style reel, okay? Uh, very, very reminiscent of a Mitchell or anything of that nature that has the clicking bail. Click. I said click. But it does work really good. Uh, it does function. Everything was there. Nothing was broken. And it was five bucks. Okay? Five dollars right there. We've got to come up with a plan for this. Um, it's a little big for bass fishing or, or, or pan fishing like I normally do. So it's a little too big for that. I mean, it, you can do it, but it's just a little too big. And man, I'm gonna tell you what, they made reels back then. You could, if, if you didn't, you know, if you lost your anchor, you just tied a rope to this, you threw it in the water and it'd keep your boat from going anywhere. But yeah, she's a chunk. But that's not the interesting one. It is interesting, don't get me wrong, but that's not the one that really, 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 really caught my eye. The price caught my eye on this one more than anything. Let's go to the next one. The Langley, see that? Can you read that? I'm hoping you can read that. The Langley Spin Flow Model 820, made in the USA. I had never seen one. Had the little box and everything. So I'm gonna take this out real quick. Crazy looking reel. Well, it's not crazy looking, it's just cool. Can you see that? It's a Langley Spin Flow. Now, there's no switch or anything on this for flipping backwards and forwards and all of that nonsense, but it's just a really cool looking reel. Had the box and everything, and uh, it was all there, and I'm hoping that when I take it apart, it'll all go back and still be there. But it's just a unique uh, very not cheap is not the word i want to use it's made in the u.s i'm going to look them up more uh pat pendon made in the usa langley corp san diego california automatic self-centering bail what oh makes spinning easy 
for a beginner as well as an expert. Now, what I think they mean by that is when you come back with that thing, every time you come backwards, every single time that you come backwards with it, it puts that bale up there where you can grab the stick, except that time it didn't do it. Obviously, we have some internal problems that need to be cleaned and taken care of, but we're going to take this thing apart right now and clean it up. I am going to take you down to the table here, and we're going to take this thing apart and just see what we can see and hope everything inside is all right, and then we're going to take it to the sink and give it a good cleaning. Grease her up, oil her up, and this thing's going fishing. That's right. I don't know how long it's been. It's been a long time. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you how long it's been. Here's the string. This is the line. Sorry. Professionals call it line, not string. This is what was in there. Let you get, get your get your peepers on that real quick. That's what was in the box. Seneca, 100 yards of 10 pound test. Limp monofilament. Processed from DuPont Tynex Nylon. No idea. Let's get this thing apart. It's almost quarter to eight on Sunday. We get this thing put together quickly and get it working like it should. We're going to take a couple of reels out to the water, out to the lake and test these things. And see, maybe old Franken reel from the last video and the old spin flow. Okay, after further investigation, it looks as though that rubber piece that was in the bottom that is going to keep it with that spinning, again, automatic self-centering bale. It's a little rubber piece. That's all it is. It's just a little rubber piece that when it spins backwards, it pushes, might as well show you, it pushes that little hammer backwards, and that's what locks that bale in every time to basically line up where you can grab the string and, and throw it. So what I did was, I, I didn't have any little rubber pieces like that, so I took an old ink pen, and it was one of the ink pens that have the rubber grip at the bottom. That's the rubber grip. I cut out a piece that looked like it should be the same length as what goes in there, and that's what we installed, and as you can see, it is in there pinched it back together on the little hammer, and we're gonna cross our fingers and hope that that will take care of the situation. Today's rubbers and plastics and things like that are a little bit better than what they were back in 1954. So let's put this thing back together again. And hopefully, you down with what I'm saying? I've got stuff everywhere. Scissors and needle nose and little dykes and little pieces of reel that I destroyed for no reason to try to, oh God, just what in the world. Started doing this at 7.30 this morning. It is now 10 minutes, now it's five minutes to 10. See, you guys think that it's just a 20 minute video, but it's not. Okay, so here we go. The first thing that's got to go back in is our gear. That's the very first thing that has to go in here. So let's get Give us a little grease here. And then we're gonna push it through like that. And then we're gonna work that thing around just a little bit. Get that grease going good in there. There we go. And we get the grease off of our fingers. Now, we're gonna put this little housing back in and there's only one way it can go. You're looking at it. Just like that. It's gonna fit right back in there. And we have three little brass screws that have to go back in there. Did I mention I'm really, really hoping that uh, our little repair works? Wouldn't that be grand? Wouldn't that just be grandiose? There we go. So now you're gonna see two more of those magically go flying in here. There we go. Now next will be, where's our gear? Our gear, that'll pop right in there like that all right now we're going to put our casing back on here spinner that has got to line right up with our gear come on you can do this 
There we go. All right, now our C-clip goes in between to hold Mr. Gear in place. There we go. And now we're spinning. Now, will our anti Oh, it does. Look at that. It's locking it right in place. Okay, we're not going to do that too much until we actually get out there fishing and see if it's actually going to hold up for, you know, uh, a fish or three. Okay, next, we have to put this guy has got to go on there. And it only goes in one direction because that clip, that little hairpin, has got to go in the bottom down here. So what we're going to do, we are going to put a little grease on that little stob right there. Put that on it, work it back and forth and get that grease in there. Put our little, our shaft on here. That piece goes on, I don't know if, I, if you've seen that or not, because I'm trying to hold it where y'all can see it and I can see it. And this isn't just not, it's just not, not working out well. Go through there, then we go through there. Now, the fun part, we've got to line the little hole, there it is. Dang, I think we might have done that on the first try. That's, that's just unheard of. This is not a fun part right here. Trying to line that hole up for this pin. Wow. I bet the builders, when they were putting this thing together, this is the one part right here they hated. Oh, look at that. And then they were just happy as I was just now. Now, even though this thing is extremely cleaned up, it's still a stiff reel because that, I'm going to be honest, I don't know how much fishing this thing actually did. Because, I mean, the tolerances and stuff on here are just as tight as they can be. Now, we're going to put us some grease. This is a plastic gear, okay? The big main gear is a plastic gear. We're going to have to be extremely cautious with that. Don't know how many big fish that guy is going to handle. <laughs> Probably not many, but it's a good thing. I don't catch big fish. Huh? I know that's what y'all were thinking. Don't even sit there and act like you weren't Okay, drag washer Then regular washer That's how it came apart. So that's how it goes back Just saying All right, so now we put our screw back in for the hand crank here and Then we're going to put our plate back on now, the one thing I forgot to do was I didn't clean the spool up. Forgot to take that with me into the kitchen and clean it up there. So I'm going to go in there and I'm going to clean that up real quick. And we're going to finish putting this thing back together. Try to get this thing on a rod with some line on it. And dare I say, maybe go try to use it. Let me go clean this up. Get ahead of myself because, you know, anything can happen at this point. Now, for those of you who have really been sitting on the edge of your seat, here she is. All put together, all cleaned. And here's the funny thing. Okay, when you want to come back and catch that line to be able to cast again, it puts that spool every time lined up the bail for you to be able to get you see, show you again. Every time, no matter where you put it, the ink pen, ink pen trick worked. So there you go. Sometimes you just have to dig into these things and try to figure out the technology of the time frame and, and say, hey, does this work or does it not work? Well, it did. It works. How long will it work? I don't know. The piece of rubber that was in there lasted until, from 1954 until I brought it home. So, who knows? Now what we got to do, we got to get some line on this thing. We, we got to go catch a fish. I don't care if it's just one. This thing has to catch a fish. So here we are. We're at the lake. And we got some six pound line on here. Just using a little loose speed stick that I had laying around with no reel on it. And this is going to be the very first cast in uh, a very, very long period of time. 
I'd love to say I got my hopes up high, but I mean, it was working just fine. Everything went back together, really clean. One thing I would like to say about this reel, it does have the kind of click in mechanism, but with this one, it pops into place and you can pop it out manually. You do not have to actually just crank on it to get it to work, but we're gonna use what I had on it just to see we had some fish against the bank here, but all right, very first cast. Everybody keep their fingers crossed. That was a pretty good distance. It's somewhat smooth. It does have a nylon center gear or main gear. And then, uh, of course, we're dealing with the metal shaft gear. And you can tell, though, it's not exactly the height of technology. <laughs> Even though it did have some good points. Man, it does cast far, though. I've got geese over there in my spot. We're going to have to go chase them out of here in just a minute. Man, just a short flip. I mean, I'm not joking. The line comes off. This thing's really easy. Oh, oh, we got one. We actually got a fish. Don't jump. Don't jump. Don't jump. Stay down. Stay down. Come to me. Come on up here. <laughs> there it is, people. I don't know how long it's been. I got no idea how long it's been since this one has caught a fish, but stop that. But well, we got one. Look at that. Let me see if I can get a hold of this thing here. There you go. The spin flow. <laughs> that was fun. Man, that was fun. Let's get a picture here with the old spin flow. Yeah, get on up there. I'm really surprised how far out that fish was. I mean, he was way out there. Oh my goodness. Right when I was getting ready to take it out of the water. These little devil scared me to death. They give old man heart attack. Oh, we got a hit. Oh, I think we got a fish. Yeah, we do. Oh, that's a good one. He pulled the drag. That ain't a good one. What the devil? <laughs> Just a fish. <laughs> Come on over here. What in the world? Well, needless to say, it caught another one. That's two, but they're small and they're deep. I'm not quite understanding. I mean, I know it's hot up here, but little tiny ones being out there that far. They're just serving themselves up for lunch. That's... <laughs> That's some kind of acrobat, what that is. Come here, acrobat. He hit pretty good. He thought he was something different. Somebody told him, you know, you're not a bass. You're a catfish. Get on out of here. And the Bitsy Minnow gets us one. Again, not a big fish. Don't know where the big fellows are at today. How about you not putting that hook in my hand today? These Bitsy Minnow hooks, man, they're sharp and they are small. Look at that guy. Where have all the big fish gone? Anybody tell me? Evidently, they're just not where I am. Try to bring that thing past that. Oh. oh, man, are you kidding? What's going on? Some aliens flew in and took all, took all the big fish. Man, these fish are like right in front of me. Um, I'm really overcasting, to be honest with you. Oh, that's a big gill. Oh man, that's awesome. That would have been awesome, is what that would have been. And had that have you know been up here, I would have showed you how awesome that was. Bitsy hooks, why are you not hooking? 
so I just want to say that I know some of you watched uh, last week's video and it was on the kind of the uh, Franken reel that I put together the Johnson let me get this right now 110 citation put into a 110b frame what we have it on now is a vintage which is rare for me let me see which way it's titled here a vintage ted williams 3 this is a fly rod medium action eight foot six i figured it paired up with the old ted williams would be a good idea so here we go first cast of franken reel That did pretty good. I wasn't exactly sure where it went, but there we go. There we go. There we go. Come on in here. Man, that, that might be a decent fish. I can't tell. But he hit. Goodness gracious, did he hit. He almost yanked eight foot six clean out of my hand. <laughs> it's a crappie. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Oh, that is awesome. Come on up here. It's just what I was talking about wanting to be use this for and what do we do we catch one come on up here big fella hey that's a good one too look at that that's awesome absolutely awesome oh that's just my heart oh my liver my oh Whew. goodbye big guy oh, you dirty mum covered me so here we are back at the house yes it got extremely hot i mean hot to a point where it was all it was close to miserable the sun was beating down and the fish had kind of gone out deeper than i could cast to we did catch that one big crappie that was awesome and since we're going to talk about that big crappie how about that reel that caught it how about that rod that caught it for that matter the johnson citation well it was a 110 and it was a 110B. What is it now? It be Franken reel. About the best I could say for it. We can make up all kinds of names if you'd like. We can call it the 110 slash B or the 110 used to be. <laughs> anyway, it worked well. It worked great. So that just goes to show you, you know, you can take those things. You can take the 110, you can take the 110-A, you can take the 110B or the 110A, then the 110B. They'll intertwine with each other. Some of their parts will mix together and you can make a reel. That's what we did. It was a great feeling to do that, to take two reels that weren't working, or at least not working well by any means, blend them together and make one that works really great, take it out there and catch them. Big old monster crappie. That was awesome. So let's get around now to today's video and what it was all about in the first place. We're going to talk about the Langley Spin Flow Model 820. This thing, man, worked. I'm very impressed. Now, the Spin Flow, I think the flow must mean how the line comes off of the spool because it casts really well, casts really far. The only thing, the only downfall really to this reel is there's a lot of plastic parts. You got a plastic spool. I mean, it's all plastic. You have a plastic, uh, it's like a the shaft housing up top with the three screws where it went together, that was plastic. Then you have a plastic main gear. Nylon, plastic, whatever you want to call it. And I think that's where this reel right here, you probably would have found this thing stacked up on a little end cap in the old hardware store in 1954 where nobody was overly concerned about it getting stolen. Not that anybody back then would have stole one. We don't know really. I wasn't around then, but this reel is not the height of technology even though it's anti-reverse slash always lines up the spool for casting is a pretty clever, very clever actually, little device in there. Of course we broke it but I fixed it. Fixed it with an ink pen. That's the cool thing about doing this stuff. Figure out technology of the day back in that time frame and to see how it works and to be able to fabricate something that makes it function again. That's very cool to me. 
Very cool. That reel would have never gotten fished again. If somebody else would have bought it, it probably would have ended up in a Bass Pro Shops in some cabinet somewhere that looked like a, you know, 1950s diorama of, you know, somebody catching a bass or a trout or whatever. But fact remains, it did work. Both of those reels worked really well. And I'm really impressed with it. I had a great time doing that. I hope you enjoyed it. That, uh, that one crappie was really worth the entire build process and even though it was caught on the uh the reel of last week's video but to catch the fish that we did catch to even miss the fish that we missed miss the fish that we, fish to, to not catch the fish that tried to we missed some fish we didn't catch them but other than that it did fine again is the spin flow the cadillac of spinning reels no no it's more like the amc gremlin of spinning reels. It does the job. It does what it's supposed to do. It just it doesn't do it comfortably. It just does what it's supposed to do. Maybe it's more like the 1963 Beetle of spinning reels. It does what it's supposed to do. Anyway, I had a great time. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm looking forward to this old Zebco here. Another video right there, boys, girls, people. I've got ideas for that one. I do. I have ideas. I have to write them down. I have a tendency to forget them. But I have ideas. Thank you guys for watching. I truly appreciate every single solitary one of you that watch these videos, and I hope you enjoy them. And we'll see you on the next one, whatever the next one may be. I'm thirsty. See, I didn't say I was hungry that time.